share this um, really excellent um, article by Glenn Ford from the Black Agenda Report. Uh, leftists jumped the corporate ship, leaving Sanders behind. Um, it's sort of a little bit inspiring because I think finally uh, a lot of people who were around Bernie Sanders, who were following Bernie Sanders, it's taken two disasters for them to finally wake up that the Democratic Party is well and truly dead and has no intentions of ever letting anybody remotely progressive get into office. Uh, so, you know, this is an important realization for a lot of people. And hopefully, uh, as uh, Glenn Ford says in this, the black community will realize this as well. Young people certainly have. And uh, that is something that is crucial if, apart from the fact that, of course, it's very, very difficult to ever change anything through voting. And in many ways, that's not the way to change things. You need a grassroots movement. But as, as we can see in this uh, article, um, this is one, one way to put pressure on this dreadful duopoly that is leading the United States to a, basically to an authoritarian state um, and also um, tremendous poverty and social inequality and, of course, more and more war. So Glenn goes, history may record the corporate duopoly dyke has finally broken in a time of plague with the deflection, defection of Bernie's former sheep from the Democratic Party. The leftist exit from the two-corporate party electoral racket has finally begun. Nearly three-quarters of the 10,000-strong Los Angeles chapter of our revolution, the mass organization birthed during Bernie Sanders' 2016 presidential bid, voted to leave the Democratic Party and join the movement for a People's Party, also founded by operatives from Sanders' 2016 campaign. In effect, Sanders' most committed supporters have refused to once again be sheepdogged by their mentor into the cemetery where U.S. social movements go to die. Quote, Our revolution, Los Angeles, members decided that the Democratic Party is irredeemably corporate and must be replaced, end quote, said the organization's re press release. The L.A. chapter hopes to lead a national exit from the Democratic corporate straitjacket, quote, our Revolution Los Angeles is calling on our revolution chapters and progressive groups nationwide to poll their numbers on joining the Movement for a People's Party. Together they will co-host an inf informational meeting with interested chapters and groups on Thursday, May 14th to discuss and plan the new party, end quote. Hooray to that. Chapter Kyle, Chair Kyle Verton noted that Democrats are in control in Los Angeles and statewide in California, yet, quote, homelessness soars in our city. Millions of people in our country have no or adequate health care, and wealth inequality has skyrocketed as billionaire wealth jumped over 200 times greater than median wealth, increasing 1,130% in the last 30 years, he continued. Quote, we change the charge that the Democratic Party is no ally in fixing the major crisis of our generation, such as health care, housing and climate, but a partner of the, the elites seeking to increase their wealth and power at the expense of our safety and well-being. Complying with an increasingly corporatist party will harm any efforts to guarantee Americans their basic needs. Let's just hope that um, this party, the Movements for a People's Party, doesn't get co-opted by these same forces that have destroyed the Democratic Party over, over a long period of time, if ever the Democratic Party was ever any good. Quote, the people of Los Angeles need a corporate free party. We're calling on our revolution and progressive groups to join in building it. The People's Party is the next step in the political revolution, end quote. The movement for a People's Party, MPP, plans to hold digital people's conventions convention this summer and to come up with a party platform next year to replace the one they inherited from Sanders. Nick Brana, the, the MPP's national coordinator, is looking to knock the duopoly on its ass. Nick Brana has been pushing very hard. I, I actually think that he's quite sincere. I hope that's, I hope my feeling is true, but I've been watching him over the last three years and I think that he, um, is sincere and does wish for this to be something different to the duopoly that exists. Nick Browner, the MPP's co national coordinator, is looking to knock the duopoly on its ass. Quote, the People's Party will unite people into the largest party in America in the next four years, end quote, said Browner. Quote, 
We will get ballot ask access nationwide, send representatives to Congress in the midterms, win the presidency in 2024 and revolutionize this country. That's a lot to do in four years, but um, it's good to have that aim. In the meantime, it would be helpful if these new jacks to corporate free politics urge their members to vote for the Green, Greens or any other left party on the ballot in 2020 so that when the hordes of erstwhile Democratic bo voters fail to endorse the duopoly tag team in November, as expected, corporate media cannot blame the debacle on apathy, quote, uh, apathy. The Russians will be blamed anyway, plus maybe the Chinese, or maybe Susan Sarandon. If Sanders had actually run on the foreign policy platform he conferred on the Movement for a People's Party, he would have been a far better candidate. The MPPs call for, quote, a, a collaborative and peaceful community demands an end to wars of aggression, preemptive wars and regime change, end quote. The closing of Guantanamo and return of the base to Cuba. Prosecution, quote, of officials who committed torture in violation of the Geneva Convention, end quote. A halt to drone warfare. Support for a two-state solution that recognizes Palestine, Palestine's right to exist with self-determination and governance. Pursuit of diplomatic solutions with North Korea and Iran and a halt to destabilization of Venezuela and for the U.S. to, quote, join the global community in working towards a nuclear-free world, end quote. Noting that, quote, U.S. defense spending is larger than the next seven largest defense budgets combined, most of which are allied countries, end quote. The current MPP platform declares, quote, it's time to realize that peace dividends that were promised at the end of the Cold War to scale back the sprawling empire of hundreds of U.S. military bases and black sites abroad. Deploy those funds to defend the American people against the lethal and merciless en enemies that in have invaded our shores, poverty, hunger, and ill health, end quote. The MPP platform envisions turning guns into plowshares for the planet. Quote, the estimated cost of ending world hunger is 30 billion per year, about 4% of the annual American defense budget. The estimated cost of ending extreme poverty is $175 billion per year, about 24% of the annual defense budget, providing for people's basic needs, relieves deprivation, suffering and conflict. It is the most effective weapon in our arsenal. Restore international goodwill, confidence and moral authority in the U.S. by ending world hunger and extreme poverty. Strengthen and enforce the U.N. Universal Declaration of Human Rights." End quote. Not a bad beginning for a new crop of U.S. quote social end quote Democrats whose greatest obligation to the rest of humanity is dismantle U.S. imperialism, the quote greatest purveyor of violence in the world today end quote, and that's a quote by M uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Root and Branch. White American identification with U.S. global power is deep and many layered and finds insidious political expression in multitudinous ways, including among purported progressives and socialists. The MPP's racial justice platform is reformist like Bernie, not transformative, but only black folks can map the path to racial justice and black self-determination. The new mass party that emerges from the dissolution of Bernie Sanders' exercise in sheepdoggery will start out disproportionately white, despite the fact that Sanders did assemble a remarkably multiracial and largely working class electoral base, especially among the young. Black America is by far the community most deeply in, in, infested by the corporate Democratic Party. The word, quote, occupied, end quote, better conveys the historical catastrophe that has befallen black politics in the U.S. Although the black political spectrum is separate and, def and definitively to the left of the white American political spectrum, the duopoly system has grossly distorted black electoral behavior by confronting us with a devil's choice. Vote for the, quote, strongest, end quote, Democratic candidate, most often perceived as the most heavily funded corporate candidate, or risk victory for the Republican, quote, white man's party. And that's in quotes, white man's party. Only the rise of a mass black, black grassroots political movement will dislodge the Democrats from their deeply embedded position in black churches and civic organizations reversing the post-60s shutdown of black, quote, movement, end quote, politics by the emerging Democratic Democrat beholden black misleadership class. 
The revival of street politics must be combined with the destruction of the duopoly system if the political cage that entraps black America, thus cripples the national left, is to be breached. Although the MPP's Nick Brana looks forward to taking national power in 2024, the new electoral politics that the deflect defection of Bernie legions makes possible need only be potent enough, enough in the beginning to deny the Republican-Democrat tag team a monopoly on electoral politics. More specifically, the electoral anti-corporate left must be potent enough to make election of a Democrat to the White House impossible without corporate candidates' acceptance of an anti-war, anti-austerity, anti-police repression program. Since such a position is anathema to the lords of capital, the puppeteers of the party of the further disintegration of the Democrats will result, if not this election cycle, then in the next one. Radicalized black youth will lead the way in both the, quote, street, end quote, and electoral arenas. They will find that many of the wh white former Sanders youth have already internalized the language and thinking of black self-determinationist -determina politics, as evidenced in the wording of the Green New Deal resolution that was sidelined by House leader Nancy Pelosi. As I reported in the, in the March 6, 2019 issue of BAR, the black stake in the Green New Deal, the GND legislation would, quote, promote justice and equity by stopping current, pre preventing future, and repairing historic oppression of indigenous peoples, communities of color, migrant communities, deindustrialized communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low income workers, women, the elderly, the unhoused, people with disabilities, and youth, end quote, and is to be accomplished, quote, with a focus on frontline and vulnerable communities as, quote, full and equal participants in the Green New Deal mobilization, end quote. As envisioned by the resolution's writers, the goal is restorative justice that addresses past crimes against communities that were repeatedly destabilized and made into sacrifice zones for the benefit of capitalists to satisfy the demands of white privilege. The Green New Deal is committed to, quote, ensuring the use of democratic and participatory processes that are inclusive of and led by frontline and vulnerable communities and workers to plan and implement and administer the Green New Deal mobilization at the local level, end quote. Language such as this is the basis for strategic, tactical, interracial alliances, even as blacks continue to organize mainly through our own structures. A new national movement for social justice and peace becomes possible alongside a revitalized black liberation movement, but meaningful victories require the shattering of the duopoly, a process that has now begun. My assessment is that the COVID-19 crisis and economic collapse, a capitalist catastrophe whose medical and economic aspects are inseparable, triggered the mass defection in the Sanders ranks, as, as well as profound disillusion with the system, system is in quotes, throughout the US polity. As political analyst Dr. Anthony Montiero said, not only was the system collapse quote unquote total, but it was also plain to young leftists that the apocalypse would not have been much different if a corporate Democrat had been in the White House instead of Trump. Forty years of austerity and war under the corporate tag team rendered the superpower helpless against a lowly virus, while the hegemony of finance broad ever-failing living standards, general precarity, and permanent economic fragility, requiring regular infusions of trillions of federal dollars to keep the oligarchy's cas casinos afloat. Bernie Sanders' ignominious surrender to Joe Biden's, quote, make America like it used to be, end quote, politics, showed the acolytes that their icon was a prisoner of the duopoly who would never leave, so they made their exit. A new era of U.S. politics may have begun with profound implications for the future of the planet. And that's by a Black Agenda Report, Glenn Ford, um, and it's at blackagendareport.com. So that's an excellent essay by Glenn Ford. It's a very prescient uh, site, the Black Agenda Report. They saw the writing was on the wall about Obama before he uh, started running. They were calling him out. So it's worth always following the Black Agenda Report to get that perspective, and um, they have excellent writers there. Um, I just hope that the Movement for a People's Party, I know it started off this way, and uh, it's great that it, that it has because it's so desperate. I know that we can't change 
systems really through voting, you can ch only really change it through a mass movement to mass people's movement, a nonviolent mass people's movement. But um, this is certainly uh, one way to go about it and also to utilize Bernie Sanders' movement, uh, which has been somewhat radicalized by or woken up basically to what is really going on and how they're being played for fools basically. Um, and that this duopoly needs to be busted up desperately. It's just really in many ways one big party with one side that pretends to be uh, for minority groups and women. Uh, it, it feigns concern for those groups and yet abandons people like Tara Reid um, because um, we can't call out perpetrators within the Democratic Party. They support mass funding of corporations. They take lobbyist money. They abandon black people, even though they're always saying that they, for black people, they always abandon them once they get in. And in fact, the Democratic Party brought in a mass incarceration bill through Bill Clinton, and they've been paying for that ever since. They do not care about black people. And sadly, a lot of the black community have felt like the Democratic Party is better than the GOP, but really they're so much alike and they just have insidious ways of screwing everybody over. So um, this movement for a People's Party, we can only hope that it does not become co-opted by those same forces within the Democratic Party that turned it rotten to the core. If ever it was any good, I don't know, but um, it's rotten to the core and hopefully the same forces that are doing that, I'm sure that there will be forces that will definitely try to co-opt the movement for a People's Party because that's they do not want any, anything remotely progressive um, disrupting the stranglehold of the duopoly. So there will be many, many attempts from sources to, to um, disillusion people within that party, to co-opt people, to move to the center, to forget about the anti-imperialist position and all those positions. That definitely is going to go on in the next few years and beyond. And let's hope that, um, that they don't fall by the wayside like so many seem to do in politics. Anyway, so thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please share if you like this content. Click the like button. Click the notifications bell. Otherwise, you won't receive notifications when I drop a video. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Until um, next time, my name is Trish Roberts. Go vegan. Bye for now.